Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're well. Welcome to another Business Vision webinar uh, this afternoon. I'm going to go through windows of opportunity today, which is basically how to increase sales. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Business Vision are, we specialize in helping small businesses grow profits, cash flow, and run a firm of accountants to assist doing that in the Plymouth area. Uh, many of you will have been to webinars before and seminars, so welcome on board. So, windows of opportunity, uh, going to increase sales. And if I just go through a little bit of an explanation about what we're going to look at. Many of you will be familiar with the four ways of making more profit. We've gone through this at webinars and seminars before. So first way is obviously to increase the number of customers. And you can break that down into either gaining more customers or losing less, or ideally both. Second method is basically to increase how frequently your customers do business with you. Third way is to increase the average transaction value, so each time they do do business with you, they're spending more. And the fourth way is to basically increase the efficiencies within your business, and within that we would include cutting costs. Um, so today we're going to concentrate on the second one, increase frequency of transactions. Basically, how do we get your customers to do business with you more regularly? And a very key way to do that is looking at WU. I'll explain what WU stands for a bit later. Um, but it is a concept discovered by a very clever marketing guy called Peter Thompson, probably about 20 or 30 years ago, and refined by us and others over the years ever since. So before we go into specific detail and, and show you how to do that, I just want you to start by thinking of a number, not just any number want you to basically think of levels of profit. So either your last year's accounts, don't need to be very accurate with this, just what you feel it is before you took out your own uh, rewards, or average over the last three years, whatever it might be. But just get that figure in your head. And then multiply that figure by 10%. So for those of you who aren't mathematically minded, just take the last digit off. So if your profits are 100 grand, 10% will be 10 grand. And then take that figure and multiply it by 5. So in that example, 100 grand profit divide, multiplied by 10% is 10 grand, multiplied by 5 is 50. Now that figure you end up with, in my view, is the minimum possible increase in profit through the Woo process over the next 5 years. That's why you've multiplied it by 5 uh, to get 5 years worth, assuming obviously you'll be in business for 5 years. But that's going to be, I suspect, for most of you, a, a decent sized figure. And this is just one idea that can easily achieve that. So it's an important one uh, and relatively simple, but can be exploited uh, to an nth degree to maximize the potential. But I think the figure we've just come up with is the minimum possible. Uh, and in my experience, in my own business and helping other clients, uh, a lot more is possible if you do it carefully and properly, which is what we're going to help you do this afternoon. Uh, and it's so powerful because it exploits sales to the easiest people to sell to, which is your existing customers. They know you already, so you don't have to go out and find them. Hopefully, they like you and they like what you do for them. So it's going to be very easy to sell more stuff to them. Uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at today, uh, more transactions with existing customers. So first thing we need to do is just define a couple of things, and that's going to be who are your customers and what do you sell to them. So customers slightly more difficult to define because you don't know whether they are actually customers but not in buying mode at the moment, or whether they've actually gone somewhere else or just don't need what you sell. Um, so that can be a little bit harder to define, but for the purpose of today, probably we're looking at somebody who's bought something from you in the last 12 months. Clearly, if you're a car sales garage, then you might find your customers have a buying cycle of three to five years. So the fact that they haven't bought in the last year doesn't mean they're not a customer, just means that they're not ready to buy a new car yet. So be flexible with that, but it doesn't matter too much 
how accurate these figures are or how accurate the detail the principle will become clear as we go through it doesn't need to be hugely scientific so just work out who your customers are if you've got a CRM list it's probably those if you've got a list of customers on your bookkeeping software it's probably those but only those who've bought recently uh, and then what you sell to them or what we found in going through this exercise with businesses it's probably more than you might think uh, so a good exercise to do to work this out is to get your team members together and independently ie not cheating get them to just list out everything that you sell names of products or names of services depending on what type of business you're in and then look at the lists and just see who's got what chances are no single team member will have every item that you sell or provide on their list and I would include in that the business owners often don't remember everything they're trying to sell or do for their customers but if you combine all those lists you've probably got a fairly accurate summary come to your mind is if our team don't know what we're trying to sell or what it is that we do for people then there's not a hope in hell that your customers are going to get sold that because they aren't going to come to you and ask for something they don't know you already do so if you're not aware of it chances are it's useless having that on your list at the moment because none of your salespeople or team will be promoting it because they simply don't remember that that's what you do so that in itself is a useful exercise if you look at that list and say mark we only do one thing very unlikely that that's going to apply to any business because there can be different versions or variations of that one thing but if it's very very specific to be one thing I would probably suggest that you look at expanding that into different versions um, or different associated products because trying to just do one thing no matter how niche it might be is unlikely to be successful or allow you to grow your business substantially um, but if you think it's only one and therefore this whole process doesn't apply I'll be happy to have a conversation uh, just to see where that one thing could be taken so we now know who our customers are we know their names uh, and we know what we're selling uh, and we know the names or descriptions of those products or services so what we're now going to do is to start at what we call a woo chart so that's a, a blank woo chart just a couple of points before we get into this you'll notice that on the left hand side I've got names of customers and along the top I've got the names of products now I'll refer to products throughout the webinar but it could be products and or services so if you're a consultant or accountant like myself it will probably be services if you're a hardware store it's probably going to be products but it could be a bit of both doesn't matter the principle is the same and the other thing to be aware of is to make the webinar easy to understand and easy to see I've only put a limited number of customers and products on the Woo chart the reality is in your business that could well be 300 customers and 50 products so you would need a far bigger Woo chart and we'll explain later how you would do that but typically we find things like whiteboards Microsoft Excel uh, or even paper based versions are, are very good ways of creating your Woo chart and at the end of the session uh, this afternoon I'll let you know how you can get your hands on the template both a written paper version and an Excel version um, so if you hang on to the end I'll give you some guidance to get that so you can get cracking so there's a blank Woo chart it's basically a grid customers down one side products along the top and what we then start to do is we start to enter the potential sales figure for each product against each customer so the bit I've just entered on the screen there is the potential sales figures of each of those products for customer A so customer A could spend £100 on product 1, £80 on product 2 and so on and then at the end we've just totaled up what customer A might spend on the total products or services and that's 880 pound now clearly not every product or service is going to have a very specific figure it could vary depending on the customer or depending on exactly what type they want this is just best yes it doesn't need to be scientific at this stage it's just a figure um, so it could be the average or it could just be your best guess 
and just plonk that into the grid. Then you continue and just do the same for all your customers. So on the screen there, I've expanded product three to show what the potential sales figure could be for customers B, C, and D. And in my case, I've put down some different figures, but clearly if you're selling a very defined product with a price list, then you'll find that product three would have the same price for every customer, give or take. In which case that would be 200 pound all the way down. But in my case, different figures and then total that at the bottom being the total possible sales of product three, in this case, 850 pound. And then you do that right across the grid. So when you've completed everything and it may take a bit longer given that you might have a far bigger chart to start with than I've got on screen, you'd end up with something like that where every cell contains the possible sale of a product to each and every customer that you think you can work with. And then total top and bottom. Um, so right hand side should be totaled and the bottom uh, row should be totaled. And just so you know, you've got it spot on the very bottom right cell. In this case, £4,405 would be the same for the right hand column and the bottom row. They should both add up to the same figures if you've got things done properly. So that's effectively a completed Woo grid. So let's just take that couple of stages further and explain what we're going to do with that. So clearly some of those customers, because they are customers, will already be buying some of those products or services. So you'd need to know which ones those are. And in this case, I've color coded it yellow on the screen. So if we take product one, my customer A, B and C are already buying that and they're buying it to the tune of £100, £400 and £50, let's say per annum. Um, so I've marked that as yellow, so I know that they're already buying those products uh, and that's nice to know, but that's already in the bank. We're not really going to move forward with that with today's session, although there clearly are things that you could do with that with other ideas. And we've got a load of other cells uh, that are lighter shaded, but basically existing customers aren't buying from other products or services that we do. The next stage is with those lighter shaded ones, the ones that aren't presently being sold, there will be some cases where certain customers cannot or will not be able to buy those products. And we mark those in red to indicate that they're not possible. An example would be if I had a service selling company secretarial services to do with all the company's housework that needs to be done. Clearly, if customer A is a sole trader, they would have no need for that product, so they're never going to buy it. So I'd cross it out, mark it in red, so I know that that's not a potential opportunity for me. Similarly, if I had a client who was very small with, say, £10,000 turnover, and let's say product four was a £5,000 consultancy package, very unlikely that they're going to go for that given the size of their business, although not impossible. Uh, so I'd, I'd want to mark that down as not being a realistic or even possible sale that could happen. So in this case, there is £700 marked in red. That's £700 worth of sales that I now think is not achievable. But everything else that's left behind, which in this case is 1355 that's or the lighter shades where people aren't presently buying stuff that they could, that's what I would call a window of opportunity, which is where the acronym WOO comes from. So that's basically things that we sell and do that some customers are presently not buying. So we want to exploit that window of opportunity by trying to get those customers to buy the things that they're presently not buying. Now clearly, you're never going to, even if you take out the ones that aren't possible, you're never going to sell every single thing to every single customer. But the reality is that the extent that you filled that grid is probably going to be very small. There will be very small numbers of yellow shaded cells and an awful lot of white space, which is the potential for extra sales within your existing client database. You don't have to go out and do marketing for this particularly. You don't have to go out and find leads and customers and convert them. 
these are already people buying. So if I've got customer B spending £400 a year on product one and product five, it's very feasible that I might be able to get them to buy product two and product four, or at least one of those two, in which case I've still increased the sales from that customer by 50%. So the rest of the session is about how we get that window of opportunity to be a reality. But as I say, that figure, the potential there is huge, which is why I strongly recommend you do fill out the grid to start with rather than trying to cut corners because it will highlight exactly how much money is left on the table when you're dealing with your customers. Okay, um, so we want to aim to sell that particular blank product or service to the customers that aren't presently buying. So the next stage is on the blank cells, the light shaded cells that aren't existing sales and aren't sales that can't happen, just split it into two. It doesn't matter exactly how you do it. This is a very simple process. I just tend to do it with that little diagonal split, but you can use any method you like just to divide that cell into two because you've now got two potential courses of action to take in order to maximize that windows of opportunity and convert it into potential sales into real sales and your first aim is to basically put a T in that grid uh, and that indicates that you've told that customer about that product or service if they don't know you do it then chances are they're not going to buy it and many many businesses have come across situations where they're chatting to customers or clients and you're talking about something and the client goes, oh, I didn't know you do that. I've just got Joe Bloggs down the road to do it, leaving you feeling very frustrated. Um, you know, so on a number of occasions, I've had people come in or I see in their accounts that they spent £20,000 on marketing consultancy, which is a service we do, but they didn't know. So they've now spent that twenty grand with somebody else simply because I hadn't made it clear and told them that that's exactly what we do. So the first stage has got to be tell them so that they know about the product and they know about the service and we're giving them the opportunity to buy it. So your aim amongst whoever is the relevant people within your team, but it's certainly going to be your salespeople, it's certainly going to be the business owner, but in all likelihood it also would include practically every member of the team their job is to make sure that that customer is told about that particular product and eventually all the products. Now, before we go on to the next stage of what you need to do, let's just go through some ideas on how you would tell people because the way this is going to work most effectively is not to do the telling in a quick wishy-washy way. Um, so what we don't really want is a quick 10-second chat between the business owner and a client or even the secretary and a client where they go, oh, I don't suppose you need this. No, you probably don't, do you? That's, that's not going to basically tick the box, in my view, that says the client's been told. So it needs to be clear and it needs to be very specific. And we need to remember that this telling is technically still marketing. It's very easy marketing, but you are still marketing products and services to existing clients. So here's a few ways that you might do it, but there are loads and loads of others that you could probably come up with, but it will give you a feel for what we want businesses to do. So if you have meetings, and uh, many businesses do, every meeting in my view should have an agenda. Uh, and one of the reasons why we think they should have an agenda is it gives you the opportunity to put on that agenda to discuss woo product or products. Um, so on the agenda, you can have the normal things you do for that meeting, but halfway down, there might be a thing that says discuss product A or discuss product B. And that lets the person know that you're going to discuss product A, but it also reminds you to do it and doesn't give you a way of opting out. Now, clearly, in a sales meeting or any form of meeting, the agenda that you give to your customer would not say discuss product A, and it certainly wouldn't say do cross-selling. It would be something a lot more client-focused which in my case might be uh, discuss how we might increase profits by £50,000 for you. Um, or in a solicitor's case, it might be discuss how we might avoid a £50,000 lawsuit. So make it client 
centered, client interested, so that they think that that's something that is going to be of benefit to them, and it should be, um, because you should only be selling and doing stuff that's going to be of use to your clients. So that would be on there, worded appropriately, and on every single agenda and in every single meeting, you would discuss that, along with all the other things that you've arranged a meeting for, but it's quite easy to put that in, and if there's some interest, you can always then arrange a separate meeting to specifically discuss product A on a separate occasion so that it doesn't take over the meeting, but you can play that by ear. Sales meetings, so if you have got sales people or if you actually are going around having sales meetings with people, then that's clearly an occasion where you want to be having something on the agenda to say, discuss product A, product B, not just necessarily the thing that the customer wants you there for. Uh, phone calls, uh, again, if you're ringing up people or chatting to them about other things, it's always useful to try and put something into the phone call about a different product or service just to say, oh, by the way, I didn't know if you knew we now do this. Uh, just thought I'd let you know. And you could even mention that you know, you've had some clients say, I didn't know you do that, so that's the reason why you're now telling them. And you could even expand that into saying, if you know anybody else as well, then they can do it. Visits, obviously, you may be visiting customers, clients, for whatever reasons, maybe just to catch up. Um, but again, those are occasions where you might want to just put in a discussion or a demo or whatever about one of those products or services on the list. Uh, technical contact, so again, any technical visit, so if you are, let's say, a burglar alarm sales business, then you will have probably regular maintenance contracts. So it would be useful when your engineers are calling out for, for them to have a little two-minute thing they need to do to make sure that that customer knows that they finished the engineering side of it. And just to mention, did you know we do this? Or we've got a special offer on this at the moment. I thought I'd let you know as a preferred customer. Obviously, flyers, uh, not quite as one-to-one, -one, but if you're not in close contact with customers, flyers would work as a marketing exercise, as would newsletters, LinkedIn, you know, any uh, items posted on LinkedIn could mention services or products that you do, Facebook, blogs, and any other number of numerous marketing methods can get those out there. But the key is they're getting them out there to your existing customers. So once that's happened, uh, and I would probably be tempted not to put a T in for something as woolly as a blog, but the blog might get them to have a chat, and then you can say, I've told you. Not every telling is going to produce a selling, but that's just part of how business sales and marketing works. So we've told them we put a T in the box. That's the first stage of what we're trying to do, and then the second stage is obviously to convert that telling into a sale. So we now have filled that box with a sale, and we can move on to another blank cell for a different customer or a different product, and so on. So your business job, your salesman's job, the business owner's job, is to fill all those blanks with a T and then an S. So let's just quickly look at how we would do the S bit, the selling. And this is pretty much marketing 101. It's stuff that we've discussed at our seminars and webinars before, and it's a huge area, so it's not one I'm gonna reiterate in great detail now. Some of it will be familiar to you, but the, the detail of the nuances of it are huge. Um, but clearly what you do want uh, in these cases of trying to put an S in the box is you want some form of headline. If it's a flyer, that will be a literal headline, because the headline is the only thing that's going to get them to read on, so it's got to be good. If you're not sure about headlines, then we will gladly critique your marketing stuff to see whether you've got a great headline, and indeed to see whether the rest of the marketing item is of any use. And we'll be happy to do that free of charge, but make sure the headline's great. And it's got to be, as headline would imply, at the top, and it can't be, as it often is on websites, the name of your business or something fairly bland. Uh, it's got to be something that gets the customer's attention and gets them interested and in reading on. And if they do read on, some of the other things you want them to see are the benefits of product A or service A. And we would, as we have with other webinars and seminars, state that that 
must be benefits and not just features. Uh, so a feature is something about the product or service. A benefit is what it's going to do for your customer. Uh, USP, unique selling point. So again, it may well be that you've made them aware of something you do or something you sell, and they might be vaguely interested. What that might then do is get them looking around to see who else might be doing that and see whether they can get it cheaper. Uh, so you need a unique selling proposition. You need to explain why you're different from everybody else and better. Uh, and again, separate subject for a whole different occasion uh, that can take up many hours. But for me, a unique selling point is not for cheaper. If that's a unique selling point, then I suspect business won't be running on for much longer. Uh, so if you don't know what a USP is or how to get one for your business, again, we do uh, products and services where we can go through and create USPs or expand the existing ones you've got so that they're brilliant. Again, big, big subject, uh, not just for today. Afters, you need to explain exactly what the customer is going to feel like or be like after they've bought it. And this is the most crucial part of selling once you get them into the reading and the engagement process is they want to know what's in it for me. What am I going to feel like after it's done? So if it's an accountant promising to increase their profits, it's how am I going to feel? How much better off am I going to be? How many more holidays will I be able to afford? Rather than the nitty gritty of exactly how we're going to do it. So it's afters. All customers want to know what their afters are and that's what motivates them to buy. And if you can, an offer is always good because that then prompts them to buy sooner rather than later. They might say they're interested, but it could still take three or four years to take you up on that selling. You prefer them for, to be doing that now. So an offer will help smooth the sale, but it will also help make the sale a lot quicker. Um, so that's the selling process. Bear in mind that the selling process will be a lot easier in this particular instance because you're selling to your existing clients. Now, we've gone through what the Woo chart is. I say it's a fairly simple process, but don't let that fool you as to its power. The power is huge, and that's why I got you thinking about a number at the beginning. Uh, and if you think about it, the number I got you at the beginning was the headline into the marketing of the webinar. So here's a, a few tips, uh, but again, if you've got questions or want assistance with this, you can either fill out the little chat box uh, on your GoToWebinar uh, toolbar, and we won't be answering it during the webinar, but I will certainly come back to you afterwards, or I'll be giving you an email address a bit later on where you can email questions, and I'll gladly try and help or provide you with resources uh, to move you forward with this. But here's just a few tips just to try and make it work a bit better. In most cases, I would sell one product at or service at a time. Don't go into a customer meeting trying to sell product A, B, C, and D in the hope that one of the four is going to stick. What that will probably do is confuse and make it far more likely that nothing's going to stick at all. So concentrate on item one, knowing that if they do buy that or they give you a definite no, you've got the ability to move on to product two a bit later on at another meeting. So it's one at a time. Usually there are exceptions to that, um, but one at a time usually helps, and it also makes it a lot simpler for people like salespeople to get their head around and so on. Bear in mind persistence pays off. We're not saying that you have one quick conversation or put one item on an agenda and they immediately lap up the sales. Like any selling, this will take a bit of time. It will be quicker than selling it to leads because you're not cold calling, you're not cold selling. These are warm clients uh, that are likely to want to buy more stuff from you if it's of interest and relevant, and they just need to know about it. Um, but it does need persistence. So you are going to, in all likelihood, need seven to ten points of contact, as we often point out, before a sale may occur. So don't give it to a salesperson. They said, oh, yeah, I did that. I put it on the agenda. Nothing happened. This is a useless idea, or I'm going to move on to what I normally do. They've got to be doing it many times in many different ways. But again, if they're seeing it in a blog, if they're being mentioned at a meeting, salesperson is to just give them a section of the woo chart to work on that month. So you can just cut out a section of the woo chart, tell them where the blank bits are, and say, right, this month I'd like you to work on customer one to four, products B to E. 
because if they see a whopping great woo chart on the wall with thousands of grids it's going to turn them right off and make it seem like an impossible task wouldn't even know where to start so just give them a small bit even if it's just this person this product get them to buy it this month or at least make sure they've been fully told and also what I would do is quantify the effects of woo so once this starts to pay off I would actually start to record what that means in terms of sales because a lot of people lose track of this and think it's just part of normal business but if you quantify it it will identify what Woo's been able to achieve and that will hopefully help you get more salespeople and more people in the team doing it but it will also sell it to you if you're a business owner to say this is definitely a, a powerful idea so don't lose track of what Woo's achieved because it's just going to be another invoice at the end of the day in your bookkeeping system but just make sure you know what the woo did do how many things that you were trying to get woo to work with did work and what was the financial effect of that um, because I say I can think of few better ways of increasing profit probably the only other one would be pricing which works even better um, than woo uh, anything else you do with marketing is unlikely to work as well but we'd like you to prove that to yourselves by quantifying it. And then as with all of these sales systems and all the things that we cover at webinars, it's ultimately going to be about systemizing and having this happen systematically every day, every week, every month in the same way until it keeps paying off. So don't just dip your toe in the water and just try it for a week. Don't just try and randomly come up with a few things. It's got to be done the same way in a number of different ways, in a number of different places, by a number of different staff and team members uh, for it to work. But you can start off with a couple of the easy ways such as agenda items or just bring it into a sales meeting as an extra bit of chat and then gradually expand how you do that into as many areas as possible. And again, I'll be quite happy to discuss how that would work for your particular business if you want to get in touch. An example of a system here, which again I can give you, is just a simple checklist that says what's the specific product or service. So you would have one of these sheets per customer and you just list down what's the top five that we think they might be interested in and just work it that way and put some notes and your salesperson or your business owner will just keep that little chart in the client file. So whenever they're in touch with them, ringing them, popping out to see them, they just pull that sheet out and go yes I need to tell them again about product A or I've told them about product A and they weren't interested let's move on to product B but keep it moving all the time it doesn't need a lot of time spent on it but it does need a lot of persistence so that's woo uh, windows of opportunity as I say don't take the simplicity of this uh, too lightly it is a very very powerful method and um, so I'd strongly recommend you commence bits of this almost immediately it doesn't take long to set up and gradually expand it and by all means come back to me feedback on how that works feedback on problems or things you might want help with be happy to help with that okay appreciate you attending that just give you a little bit of um, information about some things that are coming up our website which is listed there has details of all upcoming seminars and webinars we do webinars about once every two months purely on subjects of practical issues not technical uh, and we do seminars which are purely about business and cash flow growth uh, again every month every two months or so and we do those at a local hotel details of all of those will probably be emailed and sent to you in the course of our marketing anyway but if you want to find out what's looming website has got all the details or you can email Wendy at the email address there the next two events are a live seminar in October which is titled how to double or even treble productivity that's what you would loosely call time management but I think it's more about the virus that is what we call busyness these days on how business people and their employees and staff are struggling just being too busy therefore not getting the right things done not getting the things that should be done done and generally feeling stressed out um, so it's how to double or even treble productivity, do the right things uh, within less time. So time management possibly, but I think it's a, a lot more.
broad approach and a slightly different way of looking at things with some different ideas. Um, so that's live on the 20th of October. And then there's another webinar on the 17th of November, and that's designed to look at the Zero Bookkeeping Cloud software, which is a major, major piece of software for bookkeeping and actually a lot more. So we're going to be looking at where you can go next with Zero if you've already got it set up to do basic bookkeeping. What else can it do? What else can your accountant help you do with Zero? And even if you haven't yet got Zero, I would probably attend that webinar because we will be showing some of the uh, tricks and features of Zero that might not be well known. But in the course of that, you might well decide that Zero is a fantastic piece of kit to have for your business if you're presently using Sage bookkeeping software or Excel spreadsheets or, God forbid, paper, uh, then that's probably a good one to attend for half an hour, 40 minutes in November. So if we can get you to one of those, that'd be great. Look forward to seeing you at those. Uh, any questions about those, again, email Wendy. And if you want the template that I mentioned, uh, we've got two. We've got an Excel-based one and a paper-based one. Be happy to provide both. Just, again, email Wendy. Just even just put template in the header and we'll get that straight out to you within the next day or two. So I appreciate you attending today. Hope you found that really useful. By all means, get in touch. Let me know how you get on. Failing that, we'll see you at the next seminar or webinar. So for the moment, thank you and speak to you soon.